Hello and welcome back to Alex Go Sailing. In this episode, I'm going to be fitting some nice shiny new bits to make an A-frame to get that mast up. It's way too difficult at the minute. And uh, if you saw in the last sailing episodes, it was quite a pain to get up even with two people. So I'm going to make a solution that's going to make it easy for just me. I've seen this idea floating around on the internet. A few people are using A-frame setups. Um, I'm going to use uh, an old spinnaker pole end because I've got a new spinnaker pole. These came with it, so I'm just going to get new ends for the spinnaker pole. I'm going to use these. I've got this galvanized um, what is it? Just tube. Came off a trampoline so you can add multiple lengths. I'm going to add another length to this. So I'm just going to go up and test this. Um, you can see these ends don't really clip in very nice. They spring back like they should. Probably clean them up and make them work better. But for this A-frame setup, it should be perfect. Now I've got this eyelet bolt. Uh, probably oversized, but you know, stainless steel, big heavy thing gonna work wonders so I'm gonna have two of these holes obviously a meter longer than that and then at the top I'm gonna to join through this and then one end will be halyard and the other end will be for the pulley block so I'm using my main sheets to raise it um, and hopefully we get enough height and leverage to be able to pull the mast up from up on the deck up there and mounts about there and that's pretty much where I'll be raising it from normally so having an a-frame that just raises that point up a little bit higher so I can pull from the bow and uh, get some more leverage on that mast. Right, so the basic plan is when raising my mast, I pull the mast back, mount it in the hole, and this is my pivot point. So if you can see my pivot point where it lines up to, um, it's pretty much in line with this one here. But also I've got these ones here which aren't used because I've got two rear ones, they stay, and because that one's forward of the point, that one has to be removed when I raise and lower the mast. This is the setup with the spinnaker pole. I'm either gonna, um, attach it on this one or this one haven't decided yet just based on the pivot point ideally i'd like to use that one because i don't have to worry about taking that um turnbuckle off um but we'll we'll fit this up and the plan is i'll come in and just lock it in almost like a spinnaker pole um and that'll be up there so you start off there and it does give me enough clearance uh, with these old mounts so i'm quite happy about that i'm gonna have to worry about it uh, and these are run up uh, it's quite some height as you can see so imagine another length on this and i'll have heaps of height uh, probably be pulling from up here so yeah and then same on the other side i'll join them up with that um that little eye bolt and hopefully that gives us all we need and then that's part one of the plan part two of the plan is if that's still a little bit difficult um i've got the spinnaker pole track on my mast which has got maybe what 60 centimeters of uh, actual movement and uh, I'd, what I'd do is find the points that are closest to the pivot point which would be this one which is why I want to keep this one free um, I can attach another pole it doesn't have to have as strong as this this is probably overkill anyway but I'll get like a just a stiff rigid pole um, with another end and then the same on the other side that will come up to that eyelet and then that track would be uh, loosened off but the point is the two um, lengths of pole would be the same length and that hold the mast perfectly central. That track will then move um, in relation to when the mast is going up and down and hopefully that track is long enough to be able to go with the pivot points that are there and here and they line up pretty close so I'm pretty sure they're not going to move too much and then because they're rigid poles one would be pulling and one would be pushing if it ever moves. Hopefully that part two won't be needed but if I do need it, then I will. I'm hoping that just the, the A-frame will make it easy enough for the leverage. I just have to have one hand for pulling the pulley, um, or the pulley blocks for the main sheet, which is being used to pull the actual A-frame and the mast up. One hand on that, and then one hand on actually steadying the mast. And now I've got this furling system installed, it's even harder. So I really do need this kind of setup. All right, let's go make the a frame and then we can try it out on the weekend that we're going sailing which i think is this weekend be a little bit windy but perfect to test it out test it in the worst conditions possible right here we have the spinnaker pole that i picked up for cheap i've got the new ends at the other end just dangling over there as you can see new ends so nice and new uh, don't have to worry about them because these ones struggle to re retract and they twist and uh, get stuck a little bit so these would be perfect for the A-frame, so I'm just going to drill out the two rivets it's got. Um, 
and yeah then we can start fitting it to the other a-frame posts over in the shed right just whipped out the drill and drill bits and we're just going to drill out these rivets Alright, just pulled that out and you can see it's is very old, there's masking tape in there or whatever. I've got new ends, they're gonna be perfect and they're fairly cheap, I think 20 quid each or something. Um so nothing really. And these are just gonna get used for the A-frames. These are metal, um cast aluminium I think. Uh, the other ones are like a nylon strong new age plastic thing. So I'm just gonna mark the first hole. Uh I'm just going to rest in depth wise to roughly where it's going to be and mark it as the marker That's roughly yep yeah. let's punch this hole and drill it nicely punched hole get a somewhat sharp drill bit One hole drilled, then I'll just get the mount here. We'll line it up so you can see that is bob on perfect there. end out a bit right so I just pulled out the rivet gun I've got this little uh, assortment of rivets so I just stick this through um, get two of them and just pop rivet them in you can line up the hole there yep that one fits then I get another one now make sure you get the right length of these because you don't want ones that are too short otherwise well it depends on the thickness of material you're going through um, but apart from that, you should be alright. And you want to make sure you press down when you're doing this. Just so you can get them all seated in there. This is dangerous because I'm top riveting on top of box of open bits and bobs. Which might end up on the ground, which I do not want. And I'll be picking them up. Right, there's one. Number two. Squeeze. Squeeze a little bit more and pop, and there we go. Nicely pop riveted on. So we've got our two ends there, and then over here, I've got in my uh, mess, I've got one pole for the extension and the other pole for the extension. All right, so for the bolts, I'm just going to do coach bolts because, well. Why not? Can't bother with any of the hex head stuff. At least one side would be smooth. And uh, it's just for locating because most of the weight would just be taken up by this joint and not put on the bolt. Drill one hole through each one. These are 8mm. Um, and then we'll just bolt them up. those drilled all the way through I'm gonna to switch to an eight mil or an eight and a half whatever drill it through and we can see the bolts through and uh, tighten them up and I just trim the ends off the bolts the right length and then we've got our, our poles done and uh, I hear rain coming so I'm gonna get cracking See, nice and flush just get the angle grinder or hacksaw probably hacksaw because it's a little bit lazy to get the angle grinder out 
trim that off and then do the last holes at the top and that'll be the A-frame done. That's all it is. There we go. That one's nice and flush. So I'll just do that to the other one and that'll be me done. Right. So get this, these holes at the top of the uh, A-frame poles perfectly in the middle and aligned so that when the uh, halyard is on and the pulley is on it's pulling perfectly in line with the mast you don't want it offset to one side because you didn't measure right so what I'm going to do is here you can see these should be the same length because the same piece of pole made by the same people you would assume they'd be in the right length um, but I'm going to measure the length end to end um, and then mark a hole so I just leveled up the end down there and then mark my holes within six inches from the end these poles are exactly the right length so that's good so I just measured off the end six inches marked my line and then mark my top line so I've got two punched holes ready and I'll start with a small bit and then I've got to go up to the 12 mil bit luckily I have a big old 12 mil there I'm gonna work my way up through the other bits right just drilled my 12 millimeter hole I can fit the eye and test fit that. I'm going to put this through. That way like that. And then for this one, just like that. Like that. I'm just going to mark where I want it. I'm going to put a washer in between there as well and maybe a washer on the ends that's going to have to come off to there so put it, let's get a nut on there first always put a nut on then you'll be able to get the threads back out just going to do it square to there because you've still got a bit to go on here and in the middle Perfect. I'm going to grab a washer for there, there, and there. And then we can do this up for final time. I'm going to get some Loctite as well, just in case. Just to make sure it doesn't undo. So I've got my extra washers. I've just got to try and separate this. I'll get a washer on there. Then, I'm going to wash it. this up another washer and then not that arm that would be stupid use the eye um, that goes on a little bit of leftover thread but that's good is that good enough can I still rotate Question. Quite easily. We square up the eye a little bit, just like that, nice and square. And then you can see how the poles sit nicely together. And you can see why I put the bolts on this side; so they're not in on each other, so I can actually put them together. So then that's nice and easy to store and use. And then when I want it, all I've got to do is uh, open it up. You've got your A-frame, the ends point where they should be pointing, and then you've got your little eyelets. Up on top of Merakai now, I've got my mounting holes, got U-bolts ready. I've got my post set up up here. And I'll try and place you at the front of the boat if I can. Should happen. These go out to the side. Like this, and then that should pop in, and then the one on the other side should pop in. That's quite easy. And then the wire it, just a little bit up there, and let's try and hang this off a bit. Right, so I can take all of my weight. Now, there isn't any flex down there. Oh, 
Whoa. So that's pretty good. And then uh, whatever Halyard it is, this I think it's this blue one. This blue one will go up to this island up here. And then from here down to there is the main sheet pulley block. And that should give me all the height I need to raise it. Um, and then when I lower this down, it clears. So, so it fits between the railings uh, on each side of the boat. And it just comes to rest on the thing. And then we'll pull it back up. And yeah, pretty flawless. I'm probably going to have it angled back a slight bit um, while I'm pulling it up. But I mean, this is going to solve my problem. Right, now I've got this all put together. It's all working. I'm going to test it this weekend when I go sailing to the Isle of Wight. And uh, I'll film it and uh, do a little video on it or something. And yeah, I'm going to put it to the test. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, let me know what you think of my little A-frame setup in the comments below. And uh, see you guys next time.